Rates and Expo are definitely not a one-size-fits-all. If you're flying Precision, or if you're flying Low and Slow, or if you're flying XA, having different rates makes a big difference in how your plane reacts, how it handles, and how difficult it is to learn and perform these maneuvers. In this video, I have taken the time to put a couple of different rates on my plane and I fly it and discuss it and show you how and why things affect one another. So let's talk about your elevator and how different rates in Expo affect the way that your plane flies. For my precision rates, I have a minimal linear travel. Every tick on the gimbal is 20%, so you can see I've got one degree three degrees, six degrees, eight degrees, and 12 degrees at 100%, allowing for very smooth, predictable travel. The XA, or fast flying rate, has a soft center and extreme throws on the ends. With this, I go to two degrees, then six degrees, 12 degrees, 22 degrees, and then all the way up to 47 degrees of travel at 100%. My slow flying rates have a very low expo, so the elevator engages quickly. With 20 degrees of stick movement, I've already got four degrees of travel, then 11, 20, 30, and 47 at 100%. All right, so with precision rates. Look, I'm a long time low and slow pilot. I've always flown 3D and really never flown on the wing. Having precision rates has opened a lot of opportunity. Knife edge flight is a lot easier. Uh, flying straight lines, just doing loops and rolls, all of those different things are so much easier when I'm not trying to keep the plane stable. The plane is inherently stable because I have a forward CG and small throws. Over this past year, I really committed to becoming a better pilot and rounding out my flying skills, adding some precision IMAX stuff into things, adding some fast flying. I have never flown fast until this last year. I mean, hell, let's be real. I haven't really flown on the wing until this last year. Up until this point, I've always just done low and slow. It's what I really enjoy and I think it's super cool. I just feel like it's time to round out my skills and become a good overall pilot and have a lot more tricks in my bag. Uh, in the last IMAC contest in the unknown, there was this inverted 360 and it was the craziest thing. I'd never done it. It never even crossed my mind. So this is just me kind of practicing that with the precision rates. Then I'll pull out, go into an upline, and then we're gonna switch over to XA. All right here I switch into XA rates. When I use 100% stick, it's identical to my 3D rate. It's still 47 degrees, but it's the travel between zero degrees and 47 where things change. This blender is a good example. The tail goes down too quickly. All right, with High Expo, I have a big range that I can use center stick that's gonna allow me to still fly precision and high speeds, and it'll allow me to still do tumbling maneuvers or not. Here you can see I do the same thing, but if I slow it down for me and do a tumble, I do a lot better. I have a hard time doing high speed stuff. But again, here I'm in a rolling Harrier and you can see I'm full of stick all the way up, all the way down. I don't normally do that when I do a rolling Harrier in 3D rates. All right, here's where using High Expo is a struggle for me. And as I'm coming down in this elevator, I normally fluctuate the elevator, but because I don't have a lot of resolution in that elevator, I have to fluctuate the throttle and I miss, so I lose control. So right here, I kick it into my 3D rates. I want you to think about 3D rates like granny gear in a standard pickup truck. It's very slow moving, but a whole lot of torque and a whole lot of power. It's the same thing here. We've got a constant thrust going from the propeller down across the surfaces, but it's steady and it's controlled. So when I move the surfaces, I actually have the ability to move the surface more and the plane doesn't overreact because I move them quickly, but I use big movements. And so I can tuck the plane underneath the propeller thrust to straighten it out. All right, so we're gonna take a second and look at what happens when I have XA rates and I'm in a hover. You can see a torque rolling just the same, but I go to correct and I don't have enough elevator. With my steady throttle, 
I am expecting between 11 and 30 degrees throw on that correction. But what I'm actually getting is between 6 and 22 because of the Expo, which means I need to be either surging the throttle or have a higher pitch prop to make that Expo work. So let's go back to my low and slow rates. Recently I was asked the question in one of the comments why I would use 33% Expo instead of like 65% Expo on my high rates. And what that comes down to is the amount of throttle that I use. Because I use a very low and linear throttle, I have a consistent thrust that goes across the tail. And that gives me the ability to use a lower expo and have throw with the 30%, 33% that I currently have on this plane. You can see it's very steady. It's very locked in when I'm flying slow. I have a balance between the amount of air coming off of the prop, the center of gravity, and how everything is moving together. It's what works for the way that I move my sticks. When you're setting up your plane, it may be completely different. You may need 45% Expo, or you may need 60% Expo because you use the throttle a little bit more, or you have a higher pitch prop. So what we want to do is find a balance between the CG, the thrust, the throw, and how much you're using the stick in between. That's how we set your Expo. Every plane is different and everyone's flying style is different. You can see the 33% Expo works for me, but I'm still trying to find my higher Expo rate. Exponential is really only one factor. The other conditions come into play on where your stick is at, where your throttle is at, how much thrust you have going across, if your CG is too far forward or too far back. Now what I'll tell you is when it gets windy, it, it screws me all up. When it's, when it's really windy, it's super hard to fly low and slow 3D. And that's part of why I want to try these XA rates. I've definitely been around the hobby long enough to know that if I carry speed and I stay on the wing, that my plane is going to behave a whole lot better when it's windy. And so, again, I'm just trying to increase my skills and trying to be a better pilot. My hope is by sharing what I've learned through practicing and time and exposure to different things, that maybe I can help you become a better pilot as well, or at least set up your plane a little bit better so that you enjoy flying a whole lot more, because a poorly set up plane is a pain in the butt. So right here, you can see me reach up and switch the Expo. So the reason why this is a challenge for me is because instead of using the elevator to release the air, the elevator is more suited, is better suited for precision flight and full throws, which means that like here, my inverted Harrier, it's much more shallow, it's not deep. So you can see it's at a lower angle. My rolling Harriers are at lower angles because the elevator is engaging later. To increase the engagement or to give the tail more authority, then I need to be giving it more throttle. I need to be working the throttle a lot harder. So I try to do a pinwheel and I still can't do a high speed pinwheel, but if I put a little angle to it, I can do a pinwheel and it looks really nice. And I actually kind of like the feel of the higher expo when I'm tumbling. It gives me a little more control. Especially when I'm at speed. I can come out of it and the elevator centers a little bit quicker and easier. One of the big keys here is like when I am tumbling, where normally I keep the throttle steady, you can see here I'm gonna work the throttle a little bit. I'm gonna surge it a little bit to get it to rotate a little bit more. And that's new to me. That's not something that I commonly do. And here we go with one last tumble. I just can't do it. I'm not a high speed pilot. But here's a, what was that? So right here, my thumb is off 
of this gimbal just a little bit so I make a quick adjustment to get it back center. All right, so right here, you're gonna see, I changed the way that I use the throttle moving forward. So I'm gonna do this little rolling harrier, come down to the ground, and it's really, really flat. It's driving me a little bit crazy. So I need to get more air across the tail. So I change things around. Now listen to how much more throttle I'm getting in and how much more I'm working. What I'm doing is putting a bunch more air over the tail and surging it more so that the tail has more authority. So I already talked about this torque roll earlier in the video, but again, if I had been surging my throttle, it wouldn't have fallen out like this. So think about this, no matter where your rates are at, you want to make sure that your rates and your throttle keep your tail engaged. That's when it flies best. Look, as you're setting up your plane, take the time to try different rates. Fluctuate by 5% up and down and see what you like and don't like. Set a couple of different rates and give that a try. Until next time, please like, share, subscribe, leave comments below, and happy landing.